In this video, I'm going to give you my four tips for generating ideas in motion design, using this animation as a case study. Oh, good evening. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is Video Shop. Welcome to another thinly veiled excuse to bombard you with random film clips and trivia. In this video, I want to look at the process of creating animation from scratch. How do you go from a blank page to exported progress? Never name it final, by the way. You're asking for trouble. If you're new to motion design and the creative process is a bit of a mystery, then stay tuned. In fact, even if you're not, stay tuned anyway. Be a mensch and help out with my view stats. This isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial, as a lot of the techniques are pretty basic, but you'll find the entire workflow on my sister channel, Video Shop Longplay. You can find the link below or click up here now. It's 24 hours long, so I've had to split it into two uploads of 12 hours each, which I'm sure is helping make that channel the worst ranked on YouTube for watch time, and will probably get me kicked off eventually for hogging their server space. There's also a free project file which you can download in the link below. Before we start, why should you watch this? Firstly, I always find it fascinating when I see other better animators reveal their process, rather than just uploading the final piece of work, specifically where they get their ideas from, Great Scott. and the hows and whys of the process. Now, I'm not presenting this as a work of amazing Minecraft genius, it's the process I'm more interested in talking about, and why I did what I did when I made it. This wasn't a live brief from a client, I created this purely for the purposes of this tutorial. I should also stress that I'm not saying that mine is the definitive process, it's just how I work. Other motion designers will have their own approaches, and unless you're prepared to kidnap Ariel Costa and keep him in your basement until you've milked him for all his motion design knowledge, you're just going to have to make do with me. Second, I spent a lot of time reviewing chair reels when I was hiring motion designers before I went freelance. One thing which always stood out was ideas. Trends come and go. Remember when ink drop reveals rule the rage? But good ideas rarely date. Demonstrating that you can apply creativity and intellect to a brief is catnip for employers, and will generally make you a better motion designer. Type ideas motion design into YouTube, and this is what you get. There's some great videos, but FYI YouTube, trends aren't ideas. Also, I'm not talking about creativity holistically and how it can feed into motion design through osmosis. That's definitely valid, but it's a conversation for a whole other tutorial, so you can stop waving copies of the artist's way at me right now. This is a look at ideas creation in a practical workflow sense. How can I tackle a brief in a way which focuses on ideas rather than trends? Oh, and stay tuned to the end where I reveal my biggest fail when I made this animation and give you a bonus tip to help you avoid doing the same. Okay, let's get started. Tip one, mind map. Unfortunately, there isn't a magic ideas tap we can just turn on. Would that it were so simple. 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 If I'm honest, I find the mind mapping part a little bit like being made to do my GCC homework all over again. But it's undoubtedly good for linking themes and motifs and making connections, especially if you're collecting imagery at the same time. Everyone starts with a blank page, literally or metaphorically. When I sat down to create this animation, I had no idea what I was going to make. I'd been listening to an audiobook on the making of Psycho, so that was the arbitrary jumping off point to make a looping animation on the film Psycho. Having said that, it's quite apt as a motion design case study, because who created the title animation? Pop quiz, hot shot. Anyone? Yeah, that's right, Selbus, one of the motion design OGs. In fact, he was even paid to storyboard the shower sequence, and is credited as a visual consultant in the opening credits. I chose to do a collage style animation, as you could argue it's motion design in its purest form, importing still some footage, cutting them out, moving them around. It's not using any of the latest plugins or tricks. Plus it's fun, and we should always have fun. But before the fun starts, you have to research. Get on the old interweb and start putting together a mind map. If your brief involves creating anything from video, such as film, TV series, or corporate video, then that footage is going to be a resource that you want to get familiar with. I spent years making DVD menus, and I'd always watch the film first, as you'd be mortified if you later spotted something which could have been the key to creating something amazing. Psycho is based on a book, which in turn was based on the case of real-life murderer Ed Gain, who is also the inspiration for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. Silhouette in the film, but also the famous image of Hitchcock. Kyra Skuro. I'm just showing off there. None of this is leading anywhere yet, we're just brain dumping. So if you're familiar with the film, you know that stairs feature multiple scenes. But when we add that to the mind map, you might broaden it out to encompass lines generally, and then you can link it to the title sequence, bathroom tiles, etc. In fact, they're bloody everywhere. And then by pulling together visual research, not only on the film, but the director, you can add, say, the lines of a mappable to that list. And this is where we start making creative links, a bit like a character in a film who's become a bit too obsessed with the case. Tip two, sketch. I'm amazing at drawing. In fact, many of my friends and family call me sketchy. In addition to mind mapping, I'll also make sketches. So as I'm watching the film, I might see something that I think could be interesting in the animation, such as this scene where the sister discovers Norman's mother in the basement, and she knocks the light bulb, making it swing. Or as I'm looking at visual research and I see shapes and motives I think could be interesting. Your sketches don't have to be amazing. You're not sending these to a client, they're just for you. As long as you can make out what they are. I think of my bad drawings the same way as my handwriting. As long as I can read it, I don't give a shit. Poor handwriting brings trouble and loss of time and money in business. 
Mind mapping and sketching is a dual process for me, and I'll carry on adding to both, even once I've started animating. Some connections are easy to make pictorially. For example, here I toyed with the idea of linking this image of Hitchcock to an image of taxidermied birds. I then played around animating it, instead using this owl image. I didn't end up using it, but it could potentially have worked, and I wouldn't have made that initial visual connection with just the mind map. I'll also pull some of the images I've collected into a rough mood board using pure ref. Again, this isn't meant to be client presentation worthy. I find it handy for moving the images around and connecting them, seeing what might work together. Here, putting these two images of the house together gave me the idea to do a two and a half D camera move. So here's what your methods of research might look like. If we take this frame as an example, in this hideously powerful to presentation style, you can see how all the research feeds into the final animation. The elements behind the big guy here are from watching the film. The lines from the title sequence animate out behind him in a similar way. Then the main image came from researching pics of Hitchcock and led to exploring the clapperboard lines, but in the end I chose not to use them. And finally, the concentric circles were a nod to another Hitchcock film poster, but also circles are common motif in the film. So the research isn't just about collecting a load of images or bashing out a token mind map, it's how you organise and look at what you've collected. Think of it like when you first start a jigsaw puzzle and you scatter the pieces out on a table, or if you're a bit special, a jigsaw table. You wouldn't take the pieces out of the box one at a time and put them back. Well you might, but you'd still be doing that jigsaw puzzle when you're in a nursing home. Tip 3. Let it brew. Let it Whoa, can't afford with that. Let it brew. I'm British, and true to cliche, I take my tea making proper seriously. Milk absolutely goes in after the water. Everyone knows that one. And you let it steep. Let the tea infuse properly before serving. He gets it. So if someone put a gun to my head and made me come up with a laboured analogy for the ideas process, I would say, let your ideas brew. If possible, let your unconscious brain do some work for you. Leave a sleep or two, and then come back to your project. Good ideas take time. In my 10 tips for freelancer video, I talk about working quickly. That's great if you're animating for supplied assets or doing bread and butter work, but be careful about scheduling if you want to generate ideas. Try not to rush this part as it won't lend itself to creative results. If at all possible, try to factor in some breathing room between research and design. As I said earlier, I worked on this over a period of a week, jotting down ideas as they came to me and sketching and adding to the mind map as I went along. Time and money are luxuries for creatives. We've all seen the videos and memes, if you have any buffer time between researching and designing your frames, that's essentially free time where your subconscious is working for you for free. Think of it as subbing out part of the project to someone you don't have to pay. Tip four, always be collecting. When I noticed the abundance of circular shots in the shower scene, I remembered I had this animation that I'd made for fun a while ago and thought it could work well as a transition. I have an After Effects project full of random experiments and folders with various images and animations which I find interesting. Purely from a time efficiency point of view, it's good to not just rely on what you can gather while you're working on a particular project. If you're always collecting reference and inspiration, or tinkering around experimenting, you can draw in that research when you're on the clock. I recently saw this Adobe animation, and apart from thinking the whole thing was cool generally, I particularly like this bit, firstly and reductively, simply because it's cool. But you could also argue that because of the duality of Norman's character, it fitted on a thematic level. Then again, you could throw out all that suit shit and point out that I'm just using Adobe software to rip off an Adobe animation because I don't have any original ideas of my own, and that would be fair. Bonus tip, design first, animate second. I'm sure even those of you who are new to motion design are slapping your foreheads in sarcastic surprise right now, but apparently I work in literally the order the words appear. Motion, then design. I remember when I was young, my stepdad gave me drawing advice. Don't start the final drawing until you've sketched out a very rough outline first. Well, apparently I'm still making the same mistake decades later. I even tell students on the first lesson to never animate a bad design, yet here I can't candidly cobble the look of the animation together as I went along, plowing in headfirst without a plan. If only there was someone who could have given me some good advice before I started. With your sketches, it's super important to do that in the beginning because it's going to save you a lot of work of backtracking. So my big fail is that the weakest link in this animation is arguably the design. I deliberately wanted it monochrome with minimal colour as the film was black and white, and I took inspiration from some of this imagery or ripped it off. But the compositions are weak, some parts lack contrast, and overall it just needs a bit more design love. Partly this is because I've never considered myself a strong designer. I've always enjoyed editing and animating more. And also I often do things in After Effects which others will probably do in Photoshop or other software. It's just how I work. I'm an idiot that way. I'm a f***ing idiot. Anyway, don't do what I did folks. Finalise your design before you animate and you'll save yourself a bunch of time. And your design will be stronger for it. And that's it. My four tips for generating ideas in motion design. Now you have a secret. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.